one thing that I've tried to always do with, with any players that I've worked with or, or anyone in general that I've ever worked with is try to find the balance between being positive and telling players what they need to hear and also at the same time telling them what they'd like to hear. So this seminar today is about telling you how it is. Okay, so very quickly, most of you know a little bit about me, but one thing that I want you to understand about me, anything that I do, whether it's to do with football, business, it's all driven by this one thing. I'm passionate about helping youth footballers achieve the unthinkable. What do I mean by the unthinkable? It's unthinkable to think that a young Australian footballer can play for Real Madrid or Barcelona one day. It's unthinkable. That doesn't mean it's not possible. Okay? So, I'm not interested in, in helping uh, someone achieve something that's already mapped out for them. It's a guarantee. Someone that's, that's got the whole world's ahead of them. It's a guarantee they're going to make it. That's fine. I want to help players that are, maybe it's not so certain, but they have the talent, they have the drive, they have the potential. That's why I'm here to help you boys do that because it's, it's not really thinkable that an Australian can play at the highest level with Argentinians, with Brazilians, with Spanish, with Italians, with, with those types of players. I want to help Australian players get into that category. So that's why I do what I'm doing. Someone asked me the other day, what's the secret to my success in what I'm doing? Why am I successful? And I'm working on a few things at the moment that if they, if they come to fruition, you're going to see probably 10 years of my work come to a fruition. But someone asked me, what's the secret to my success? And I thought about it and I was able to define it into something very, very simple. And if you adopt this same philosophy or this same idea, concept, you'll be successful in anything you do. I guarantee it. And I said this before. I am who I say I am. Does anyone know what that means? When you are who you say you are. You are who you say you are when your principles and your actions align. So I say that I want to help youth footballers. I say that I want to be a contributing factor to helping Australian football grow. Everything that I do is in line with that. There's nothing that I do that is out of line with that. So what I say I am, I am. And when you do that, when the two meet together like this, that's when you start to make progress like that in anything that you do. So in your case, you say you want to be a professional footballer. Is everything that you do day in, day out in line with that? Or is there anything that you're doing right now that is not in line with that? Because if it isn't, then that's when you start to get friction and you need to start to think, okay, there's certain things that are going to have to be taken out because it's not in line with that. So as I said, today's about telling it how it is so that you leave here hearing what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Okay? And the whole idea is to help you become more successful. Okay. So it's a bit of a, a tough task, but what I actually did was, for those that attended the training recently that I've been doing, at the end of each training, I've actually been telling you little stories and little uh, things that actually aligned on purpose to six steps that I've put together. And look, I've put a few seminars together and a few um, courses together and workshops, but to be honest, nothing has come together like this one has. For some reason, this one for me just really clicked and I think that if you, if you adopt these six steps that I, I guarantee you, you will make progress like you've never seen before. This is about helping you make progress, okay? All right. I want to change someone's life here today, okay? I know it sounds ambitious. Saturday morning, we're being moved from room to room, but I want to change someone's life. Someone's going to leave this room today and they're going to maybe not think anything today, but in 10 years' time, they're going to come back and say, you know what, there was something I heard in that boardroom that just clicked. It may not click today. It may not click for another week or a month or a year. But something's going to click, and you're going to say, bang, that light bulb goes on. Okay? And that's, that's why I'm here today. You know, I had a, a rough start to the morning. I broke one of my wife's candles on the table as I was leaving the house, and she was not happy. Okay? So, but I'm here. 
and I'm positive and I'm pumped and I want to change someone's life here today. It could be, it could be a player, it could be a parent, it could even be my own life. I don't know. Someone's life's going to get changed here today. Okay. All right, agenda. So these are the six steps, guys. So we've got a starting formula, which I've put together. We're going to talk about getting serious. Work, work, work. The master key to progress. Good to great. And execution time. All right, these are your six steps from going from a start to a finish. Okay? Now, this is what I've found. There's two types of people in this world. Okay? Two types of footballers, two types of anything. And we usually find ourselves in one of these two categories. Okay? One on the right, conditions. Conditions people. Okay? I used to be a conditions person. Conditions person is the type of person that they need all the conditions to be just right before they get started. So I was going to train outside today, but it started raining, so conditions are not right. I won't be training. Uh, I was going to start reading this book today, but my dad just called me and told me to do something, so I won't be reading the book today. I'll, I'll have to start that. Um, I wanted to, uh, to go and, um, and watch this game, but, uh, you know, my car ran out of gas, so I, I can't go. So these are conditions, people. There's always a little condition that comes up that stops them from making a start on something. Conditions, people, usually, if you come back and check where they are in 10 years' time, they're usually standing in the same spot with a list this long of conditions why they're there. You don't want to be a conditions person. Person of action is someone that does not tolerate a condition stopping them from doing something. If it's raining outside, that's fine. I'll go in the rumpus room or the garage and do something. If the car runs out of gas, that's fine. I'll call someone to give me a lift. Whatever they have to do, it gets done. Those type of people are the people that you see that have created these computers, the iPhone that you're on. They're people of action. Because anything, I, I can tell you now, anything you want to achieve in life that's worth achieving, you are going to have obstacle after obstacle after obstacle put in your path before you get to it. That's just your rite of passage. Nothing that's worth having is given to you on a silver platter. It's not worth having. It's just by default. So if you want something that's worth something, you're going to have to jump through some hoops to get it. And most people, after they jump through the first or second hoop, start coming up with these. So... It's important right now for you to differentiate yourself when something starts happening, and this might be that first thing that clicks in your head. Next time you're at home, or you want to do something that you said you were going to do, and all of a sudden that little voice jumps in and says, hey, here we go. I've got a perfect condition for you right here. It's even valid. So take it. It's a free card. I'm giving it to you. It's up to you whether you want to take that condition card or you want to say, let's work around it. Let's be a person of action. So, the formula from starting where you are, okay? Sometimes the conditions are not right. They're not right. You had a certain way that you wanted to start things and, and things were supposed to line up, but they just didn't. It's out of your control. So where do you start? So this is the formula, and I've said it to you before. From where you are, with what you've got, to the best of your ability. That's all you can do. So you start from where you are. What's, what's in your hands? What's in your grasp? What can you control? And with what? what? What is at your disposal? What are your resources? Who can you call on? Who can you uh, lean on? Who, who can help you get there? Start with that. Don't try and start with someone that's out of your reach. Start with someone that's in your circle to help you and to the best of your ability. Now, this is the key, best of your ability, guys. There's no point starting from where you are with what you got if you do it at half, half intensity. There's no point. It's about doing it to the best of your ability. And what happens is, once you start from where you are with what you got to the best of your ability, something magical happens. Something comes to you and goes, bang, here you go. Something you weren't expecting. Here you go. This wasn't in, in the plan, but you've started, you've done your part. Now the universe will do its part and start giving you something back. So that's how it works. But this is what kickstarts the whole thing. If you don't start with this point, Nothing ever gets started because the conditions are not right. So if you want to be a person of action, you need to start thinking, 
Okay. I feel a bit lost at the moment, a bit daunting. I don't know what's happening. Um, let me just start from where I am with what I got to the best of my ability. And if you do that every day, every day, I guarantee you chip away and you chip away. And before you know it, you're making progress like you wouldn't believe. Okay? All right, guys. This is that moment. This is that moment where I said I'm going to start telling you how it is. If anyone in this room has any ambition of becoming anything other than a New South Wales Premier League player, you will quickly need to adopt this mentality. I do not tolerate an excuse from myself about anything. Nothing. Everything is my fault. Everything. And I mean everything. When you get to this mentality, you accept that if everything is your fault, you also have the power to make anything yours. The second you believe that an excuse is valid, then you accept that it's no longer in your control because it's out of your control now. So what are you, what are you doing if it's out of your control? Just, you may as well throw your hands together and pray if it's out of your control. But if you get to a point, and next year I'm gonna start managing players properly, professionally, as an agent. And I can tell you now, I will not manage any player that says to me once, the coach is playing me out of position, that's why I'm not playing well. The coach is giving me a hard time. The coach is this, the club is not treating me right, this, that. They're all excuses, blah, 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 blah. Players at the top level, don't tolerate them. When you get to a point where everything is your responsibility, where you accept nothing else, it's all on you, then you become invincible, untouchable. Who can touch you? Because it's all on you now. So this is the point number one that I want you to really drill into your head, guys. It's up to you. Depends on where you want to stand. Do you want to stand here or do you want to stand up here? If you want to stand up there, no excuses tolerated. No more. You have to put it into your head. And this is not something that um, will be easy. It will take time. You'll have to push yourself. There's going to be moments where you're going to feel like, oh, you know what, that is a real valid excuse, guys. Come on, it's, give me a break. You know? It's a valid excuse. You know? I proposed to my, my wife and we were set our wedding date a year and a half down the track. And then we get a call saying her father's sick, he's got two weeks to live. I've got to get married in, in eight hours notice. If anyone had an excuse to say, hey, come on, hey, give me a break here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm young, I, I, I didn't even get a chance to go back home and sleep at home. That was an excuse. But I said, no, no way. No, you've got to move on and you've got to keep going. Now I've got a wife, I've got a family, I've got to support them. So it started from that point, no excuses tolerated. So there are people out there, there are people with real problems, kids that are sick. Guys, you've got to put that in your head. This is football. So if there are people out there that are tolerating no excuses and still getting on with their life, we can do it as athletes. Yeah? So start putting it in your head. No excuses. Okay? Good. So first point, guys, as a summary, the starting point for anything you want to achieve, whether it's in football, school, sport, anything you want to do. Start from where you are, with what you got, to the best of your ability, and once you start, tolerate no excuses. Is that clear? Okay, now who has a joke? Because that was very serious. Anyone? Come on, just a short one. You're usually good with this stuff. What do you got? Oh, you've got two younger kids, that should, you, two younger siblings. Come on. And it's got to be clean. My mind's going blank. Come on. Anyone? Memory's <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Are we running clear? Next point. I told you it's going to be telling you how it is today, guys. But look, I'm confident that you all respect me enough for me to be able to tell you things that are a bit more firm and a bit more serious. You leave here, yes, you may leave here feeling like, jeez, it was intense, but I'm not worried about how you feel when you leave here in two seconds. I'm worrying about how you feel a week from now when everything slowly starts to sink in. 
That's how I want. All right. So, the key to getting serious, it's going to get a bit more lighthearted here. I've got some cool pictures and some stories, and many, I think I've even got a car in here that you're going to really like. But the key to getting serious is when you believe that achieving your goal is nothing but a mathematical conclusion. So it's no longer a chance that it could happen or it couldn't. When you get to a point in your mind where you think, now it's a matter of me doing this and I get this, that's when you get serious. Because there's something that happens in your mind once you become certain. It's like you can taste it. It's like someone standing over there with a, you know, as a baby, they're standing over there with a lollipop and the baby's here and they're saying, come over here, walk here and you get the lollipop. The baby doesn't think twice. It just goes because it knows I get there, I get the lollipop. So when you get to a point in your mind like that, professional contract, I'm here, they're holding it there. All I've got to do is get from here to here. Once you get to that point, it's on. Yeah, so I'll give you an example. Who knows this show? Does anyone watch it? I don't know if it's my, maybe not in your age category yet or, but I'm not encouraging you for to, go, to go watch it by the way, but I'm just saying, this is one of my favorite shows, okay? It's basically, for those that don't watch it, it follows three real estate agents in New York City and they sell real estate, high-end stuff like apartments worth 10, 12 million. Uh, and it just follows them like a reality TV show. But I like it because uh, it highlights a lot of different things. So these guys are, are, are sales focused, they're, they're determined, they're driven, they're goal oriented. So I, I like watching it. But one thing about this show is I'm absolutely flabbergasted by how much these guys work. These guys work like 20 hour days. They wake up at five and, and you know, at freaking midnight, they're still going. And I was thinking like, geez, like I understand that they want to achieve their goal, but that's, that's crazy. How do they do it? And they back up the next day and they go again. And I started thinking about it. These guys are selling properties, right? Let's say an average property in New York, one of the top penthouses is like $10 million. These are not like real estate agents in Australia where they get 2% commission. The brokers, the real estate agents in New York get 6%. Now, who does maths here? What's 6% of 10 million? It's $600,000. $600,000. What was that? <laughs> he said 600. He said 600. So $600,000. Guys, so if someone came to you and said, hey, guys, here's my house. Can you sell it for me? And I'll give you $600,000. How many hours a day are you going to work? As many as it takes. As many as I can run on before I collapse. And the next day I'll get up and I'll go again. Because that's a mathematical conclusion. They know you're here and if you get here, you get $600,000. So these guys, sleep? What is sleep? I don't need sleep. Now, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying that's the mentality. That's what drives them. And I can tell you now, these guys here, in terms of income, they're probably earning anywhere between 10 to $15 million a year. That's probably being generous. This guy on the right here, he's probably up over 20 million a year. That's how much he earns. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that when these guys are at a mental point where it's very clear, if I do this, I get this. So there is nothing they won't do in between to get there. If they have to stay up late, they stay up as late as it takes. If they have to get up early, they get up as early as it takes. If they have to eat a certain food, they'll eat that food. If they have to drive somewhere to, one guy caught a plane to the other side of America to go meet this guy's accountant just for 10 minutes and flew back at his own expense because he knew the prize is there. It's in my, in my grasp. And I can tell you now, very rarely, I don't know, maybe they don't show them all, but very rarely do they miss closing a sale. They usually always get what they need. So something to think about, guys. If you want to get serious about your football, if you want to get serious about achieving anything, you have to make in your head, it's so clear from where you are now to where you're going to get and convince yourself that whatever I do here, here, here will guarantee me getting that, you'll do it. If in your head you're thinking, yeah, I'll do this, this, this and that, but I'm not sure that's going to get me it, you won't do it. You've got to convince yourself that if I do this, 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 I'm going to get that. And you will do it, I guarantee you, everything that you need to. 
Okay, so the second one is about getting serious about whatever you're doing. You know, it doesn't just apply to football, guys. If you're studying for an exam, then use the same theory. It doesn't matter. The theories apply to anything you do. You don't want to be known as someone that's successful at football but a drop kick at everything else. You want to be known as someone, whatever I touch, turns to gold. People want to be around people like that. So if you start to apply these things to anything you do, you'll become like that. So, number three. Work, 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 work. Told you, man. So I'm told, my research tells me, that in 2015, this is going to be the fastest car in the world. It does not to 100 kilometers in three seconds, which I'm told is also, Manny, you're the car expert, is that good? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you count one, two, three. It's already at 100 kilometers. Not, not the speedo is at 100 kilometers, it's traveling at 100 kilometers an hour in three seconds. So that's fast. And it's a 2015 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. Is that right? Is it Z06? Z06. 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 All right. That's good. I'm not a cars guy, as you can see. But why have I got this car here, guys? And how does this relate to work, work, work? It shows success. You can't, you can't yeah. buy this car. <laughs> because you're bloody successful. I didn't think of that, but... That's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Look, close. All right, I want you to think. This is, everything is perfect. Okay? If you put this, fastest car in the world, and let's say it's going to do a 300 meter sprint with four other cars. Okay? 400 meters. There we go. 400 meter sprint. <laughs> Otherwise, the race will only last 33 seconds. So, all right, so 400 meter sprint, okay? We put this car here, maybe a Ferrari, three, four other cars, okay? Now, the first four cars have drivers in them. This one doesn't have a driver in it. Will this car still win the race? No. no. Why? No one driving it. No one's doing the work. So why I've got this here is it doesn't matter if all the conditions are perfect. If you've got your goal set up, it's perfect. I know where I'm starting, where I am, this, that. Yes, I've got the right mentors in place. I've got the right club, perfect, best club for me. Yes, everything is just tick, 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 tick. You couldn't ask for better. But if you don't get in the car and drive and do the work, it's pointless, meaningless. It's as meaningless as this world's fastest car at the starting line of a race without a driver. So why I've, why I've illustrated, illustrated that is that don't confuse all the stuff around with the most important fundamental part, you and you having to do the work to get there. That's why I always say work, work, work. It's great to watch La Liga, Premier League, Serie A, watch the TV, get excited over you know, the, the, the YouTube videos I make for you boys with the highlights and the music, they're great. Don't get me wrong. And it's good to get you up, excited. But you have to keep your mind on the work because the work is the only thing that gets you from here to the end. Without that, the rest, it doesn't mean anything. And that's, it's the hardest thing to, to try and train your mind not to be so easily influenced by attention. Because I know at your age, I was your age too, mate. And I know when girls start giving you attention because you have nice things and you look good and you've got nice new shoes and you've got, ooh, a new car, this, that, it's very easy for this to start running away because it feels good. But you need to always bring it back and say, okay, it's time to grind now. When I'm out for an hour, whatever it is, it's fine. I can enjoy the attention. But as soon as it's gone, don't be at training where it's time to work still thinking about, that's right, that girl, yeah, this, that. No, you have to be able to switch. Your mind's got to be like that. Work, switch, work, switch. So when you get to the point where you realize now it's time to work, you work. Yeah, And when you work, you've got to work at maximum capacity. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? So 
Next time you're, you're thinking, okay, everything's in place here. And the best time to be aware of this is when things are good. Not when things are bad. When things are good, that's when you should be alert on high alert. You know when an alligator eats? The most vulnerable time for an alligator is right after it's eaten. That's when it's susceptible to being attacked by another animal. Because it's content. It's happy. So it lets its guard down. So when you find yourself in a good place in football, that's when you need to say, now I need to hit the gas and go even harder. Not the other way around. Yes, I'm in a good place now. I can relax. Things are going well. Uh-uh. When you're in a good place, that means you've got five people now breathing down your neck, waiting. People on the sidelines praying for you to trip up. People not wishing well for you, wishing the opposite. It's the reality of life, guys. That's what happens. When you start to make progress, not everyone is always happy for you. So the only way to protect yourself against that is to work harder. Step it up. Make it even further distance from you and the next person. And to the point where they can't even see you anymore. That makes sense? Good. Okay. So, we've already talked about this, yeah. So, as I said, it relies on you getting in the car. So, the third point, guys, we started with the beginning. Where do I start with? No excuses tolerated. Then you need to get serious about success by convincing yourself the starting point and the end point is a mathematical conclusion. And of course, we need to do the work. As I say, guys, nothing works unless you do. Now, that's all well and good. So how do I start making progress? Okay, so I'm going to give you the master key to progress, and we talked about this before. I've added something into this. I used to say if you put time and effort into anything, you'll be successful. I thought about this. And I wasn't convinced. So I've added something to this. You need to put this into it as well. First, before you do anything. Capability. Are you doing it correctly? Because if someone's an idiot to begin with, and you motivate them, and they put time and effort into something, now all you've got is a motivated idiot. True? Yeah. So before we do anything, we've got to make sure we're doing what we're doing right. So. There's no point doing something, because if you do something wrong and you do it over and over and over again, all you've done now is learn how to do something wrong really well. So before you start anything, just check, are you doing it right? If I want to learn how to shoot and I'm starting to do it a certain way, let me make sure that it's the right technique. Is it right? Is it hitting where I want to hit before I start doing it over and again? So once you start doing it repetitively, if it's wrong, now you've got a whole other problem on your hands. You've got to try and change a bad habit. So start with... Whatever you want to do, learn how to do it right first. Once you've learned how to do it right, then you start putting the time and the effort in. So if you do these three things and you invest it into anything, I guarantee you the outcome will be successful. I want to use an example. You try and have a relationship with someone where you don't put time and effort in and see how good that relationship goes. It, it will, I, I assure you, you will not have a good relationship with anyone that you do not put time and effort into. Not a close relationship, not, not anything meaningful. Uh, and it's, it's a fundamental uh, point in anything that you do when you're trying to achieve success. Time and effort is fundamental, but more importantly, you need to make sure you're doing it right to begin with. So guys, fourth point the master key to progress guys how do you make progress in anything you do you need to put make sure you're doing it right and then put the time and effort into it and apply this to anything you're doing in your football guys anything if you just take something as an example I challenge you to do an experiment anything just pick one part of your game whether it's first touch shooting anything and spend three weeks consistently whether you do 15 minutes a day 10 minutes, whatever it is, put time and effort into it and I, I can assure you at the end of that three weeks you're going to see a massive improvement in it. So that to me would be exciting enough for me to say I've just got gold given to me in my hand. Now the only thing missing is for me to motivate myself enough to go and use this 
to be successful with it. See, the, the mistake a lot of people uh, find in this world is there's no hidden secret principles of success that someone else somehow has missed. I'm going to say, hey guys, I know people have been researching for a thousand years, but look what I found here in the corner underneath the table. It's a secret that no one had discovered before. No. There are probably a very few basic principles that make people successful. The reason why not everyone is successful is not because they don't know these principles. It's because once they know them, very few actually do anything with them. That's the difference. It's not the principles. It's what you do with them. Something only becomes valuable if I've got a million dollars in my bank account and it sits in that bank account and I don't take any interest out of it, I don't withdraw it, I don't do anything with that money. It just sits in my bank and I die tomorrow. That money was worthless to me. Did nothing. Contributed no value, nothing. So it's the same as any of you that know these principles. If they just stay <coughs> inside you and you do nothing with them, they're no different than you having a million dollars in your bank account and never use it. Or Manny having that Corvette in his uh, Chevrolet, whatever it is, in his garage and never driving it. You know, don't be like the kid that gets a pair of uh, rollerblades or whatever for Christmas. Uh, rollerblades, that's probably before your time. <laughs> I don't know. Let's stick with the rollerblades. Um, and never wants to wear them because they're brand new. And the next year he finally decides he wants to wear them and they don't fit him anymore. Huh? Haven't you ever done that? I had a, talking about shoes, I got these out of that shoes stored in supply at home. You know, I've bought like six pairs that they they come out one one year I take a new pair out of the box and I wear them. That's my shoe for the year. This is mine for the year. Right? I'm lucky my feet have stopped growing. But if I started doing that when I was fourteen, I wouldn't be able to stockpile those shoes because my foot would grow every year and they'd be worthless to me. So if you're gonna stockpile, make sure you stockpile a size up every year. But that's what I'm trying to say, guys. Something is only useful to you if you use it. If you don't use it, you may as well not have it. Okay, we've got two more principles to go, guy, And I need a drink of water after that. So, principle number five, good to great. Talked about this one before, but now I have a new story for you. Okay. Everyone wants to be good. I'm going to tell you a story about Bronx the bird. Okay? So... Bronx the bird used to hang out with all his other bird friends down by the beach. It was near, um, near a lot of cafes and restaurants, so they'd hang out there every day. And every day, the bread delivery truck would come and deliver bread to all the cafes and the restaurants. So Bronx and his mates would hang out and wait for, for the delivery guy to bring the bread to the cafes. So as he would wheel the trolley of bread to the cafes, there was a lot of cobblestones. So a lot of the breadcrumbs would start falling out the back of the, the bread. Uh, trays. So as this would happen, Bronx and his mates would wait for the delivery guy to go and they'd swoop in just like that and start feasting on all the crumbs. So this is how they got most of their food for the day. Every now and then someone would throw them a chip but this is mainly how they would eat. So they all like rummaging like crazy every day fighting for these crumbs. One day Bronx said, I've had enough. I'm done with this. I'm sick and tired of having to scavenge for crumbs. So the delivery truck arrived nice and early again. All of his mates getting ready to, to take off. He starts wheeling and sure enough, crumbs start falling. They attack, all of them. Swoop in, just like that. Hundreds of birds all over the place. Bronx says, no, I'm not going in today. He hangs back. His mate looked at him and said, what are you doing? He goes, no, I'm not going today. So they all swoop in. They forget about Bronx. They just start eating all the crumbs. Bronx decides to take a look and keep an eye on the delivery driver this time. So he's watching the delivery driver, watching every step that he makes. All of a sudden, he takes off, flies out into the sky. Bronx's best friend beats, looks. Where did he just go? But he was so enthralled into eating all the crumbs that he didn't bother looking up. So he just kept eating. Anyway, after they finished eating, he decided to, oh, I better go find Bronx and see what happened to him. So he starts flying around by the cafes, can't find him. Goes down by the beach, nowhere to be seen. He then decides to start flying around the alleys. So he goes into the alley, and sure enough, right in the back corner of one of the alleys, there's Bronx. So he flies in and looks at him. And as he sees him, his eyes nearly pop out of his, uh, out of his head. He said, Bronx, 
What are you doing? What have you got? He said, ah, I've got a whole loaf to myself here. He said, what you didn't realize, while you were all scavenging for crumbs, I kept my eye on the bigger picture, and I noticed a whole loaf of bread fall out of the back of the delivery um, tray. He goes, so I swooped in, grabbed the loaf, and took off. Now, why am I telling you this, guys? How does this relate to good to great? So many times we've got our eyes focused on little crumbs that you miss the opportunity to take a whole loaf because we're all like just those birds focused on these little crumbs, trying to get little crumbs. When you should be focusing, taking a step back, saying, how do I go from good to great? Let me get a loaf. I don't want just crumbs. Yeah? You've got to think about it. Spending time on Facebook, crumbs. Going out with your friends and hanging out at the movie cinemas, crumbs. Going to the shops, crumbs. There's a place and a time for it. But if you're saying you want to be a professional footballer, you've got to start thinking, what's something that's going to get me to the loaf? Spending time training, yeah? Speaking with a mentor, reading a book that's going to help me get there. Taking one of my games that's been recorded, getting a notepad and assessing myself on it. That's going to get you to the loaf. Don't get caught up on chasing crumbs. Crumbs not only is to do with things that you do, it's things that you allow to get into your head that can det detract you from what you want to achieve. Yeah? Comments that people say. Don't be so quick to always take in people's compliments. And at the same token, don't be so quick to take in people's criticism. You've got to get to the point where your mind is so laser focused that you are not affected by criticism and you're not affected by a compliment either. Because if you allow yourself to be affected by a compliment, you're going to allow yourself to be affected by criticism. It's a natural law. You can't have one and the other. So a compliment is great. You take it on. It makes you feel good. Yes, that's fine. But it should not detract you from your laser focus of what you want to do. You've got to assume you didn't get that compliment and go harder. So I think the next picture says it all. Let go of good guys and go for great. Because there's no reason why you can't end up with a whole loaf. You don't have to scavenge for crumbs. And I mean that metaphorically. Yeah? You can have whatever you want. If you're willing to put the work into it, if you're willing to have the vision for it, you can go for whatever you want. Yeah? Don't get caught up on focusing. There's a saying one of my favorite speakers used to say, don't get caught up in the thick of thin things. Does that make sense? A lot of little things. You know, when I dropped that candle, I screamed at my wife, why is the damn candle on the edge of the table for? We went at it. Why are you moving your hands around knocking the candle off? We screamed about it for 10 minutes. It's a broken candle. Big deal. <laughs> Let's just clean it up and get on with it. So I wasted 10 minutes of, of my morning screaming about a candle. It's a crumb. It's worth nothing. It means nothing. She doesn't care about the candle. I don't care about the candle. We just got caught up in the thick of thin things. So just keep, keep your mind under control, guys, that you don't get caught up in the thick of thin things. In your mind doesn't get caught up on little crumbs that mean nothing in the long term. Keep your eyes focused on the loaf. That's what you want to keep your, your eyes thinking on now. All right? So point number five. Get to a point now, boys, where it's time to go from good to great. And to do that, you need to let go of a few things that are in the good category. Yeah? I don't know what they are for everyone. Only you can decide what that is. And when I say let go, I'm not saying you have to cut your ties with it all together. But has anyone ever had priorities? How many can you fit in number one position? One. How many can fit in number two? So there comes a point now where you have to start to prioritize things. Okay? Now with me, I have this done as well. For me, my family is in my number one priority. Otherwise, I'd be coaching Apia next season in youth. But I had to make a decision, guys. And at this point in my life, and for all time, family is number one for me. So I had to make, it was a tough decision for me. It was a tough decision and it wasn't a tough decision. It was hard because I didn't want to let go of being able to coach, but I had faith that, you know what, 
I'm going to follow what my values are and my number one priority, and I trust that everything else is going to work out for it. And you know what? It is. Other things are coming into me that I never thought that were going to happen, and it just happened. So you have to get your priorities right now. So you're going to say, I want to be a professional footballer. What's my number one priority as a footballer? If I want to be a, a lawyer or an accountant after school, what's my number one priority that I need to be doing now? What's the most important thing? And once you get those priorities right, it's easy to make decisions about what you should be doing. All right, last one, guys. Execution time. I don't, I don't think the kids will probably understand, but you might. When you see these words, what does it imply to you? This is a reality that's going on in the real world at the moment for a lot of people. Trouble. Trouble. Yeah. I had a friend come to me the other day, and this is a true story, and said, geez, everyone in our, this is a massive company too. I'm not going to name the company, but it's a massive company. And they said, there's a lot of nervous people in our office at the moment. I said, why? He said, we just got called into a meeting. They're going to cut 20% of all jobs in the company. So 20% of the jobs, people are going. One in five people are about to get the boot. These are people with mortgages, with families to feed, and God knows how long it'll take them to find another job. This is a serious business, guys. You're talking about people's lives here. Do you know what this company is doing right now? You remember the story I told you about Adriano and the fig trees? This company is going through and it's time to count the figs. You know what that means? They're going through the farm and they're looking at all the fig trees and they're saying, which trees here produce figs? And which ones do not? And what happens to the ones that don't produce figs? They get taken out of the ground. That's all that's happening. And that happens in life. Uh, this is one of those moments, again, where I'm telling you it's something. It's not nice, but you're going from young men now into men. And these are the realities of life that you need to hear. You need to be focused on producing fruit. Because you get to the point now where it's no longer about development. It's about execution as a player. You're going to get an opportunity put in front of you, and it's time to execute it. Because if you don't, you're not going to get another chance maybe from that particular uh, area. So keep it in your head that at some point you've got to get yourself to a mental point where you have enough confidence in yourself to say it's execution time. It's time. It's show time. Yeah? When I first started doing seminars and presentations, I used to get very nervous. First time I went to, to give a presentation, my knees were rattling so hard, I think, you would have heard it from the back of the room. That's true. I wasn't at execution time yet. I was still caught up in the whole, wow, I can't believe I'm actually standing up in front of people presenting. Now, it's different. I used to DJ as well. Same thing. First time I DJed in front of a, a crowd, my hands were shaking so much, you could, you could hear the needles on the records. The needles, I used to, records, not CD players. They used to bounce. But after a point, I got confident enough that I felt like, oh, it's showtime now. I'm going out on stage. I used to love it. I used to get off on it. And same now. When I, when I present to you guys, I think it's great. I get to help some people. I'm not worrying about how I look. I'm more excited over the fact that I'm going to get to stand here and help someone. So for me now, this, being up here, this is execution time for me. Now I'm executing. You've got to get to the same point with your football. You train, you train, you train. On the weekend, when you get on the pitch, it's execution time. It's time to produce fruit. There's no more getting on the field. I'm leaving the field, and yes, I didn't make any mistakes. Fantastic. Yeah, it was a safe game. Good. Coach didn't scream at me. That's not a good performance, guys. You've got to get off the field now, and there have got to be three people on the sideline asking for your name. That's execution. And you need to lift your standard that that is what you expect of yourself every game. Not... I walk off the field, great, I didn't make any mistakes today. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to stay where you are for the rest of your life. You've got to raise the standard now. Does that make sense, guys? We're nearly done. We're in the home stretch. 
So, as I said, guys, what I just told you there, that's probably the harshest, yet the most valuable lesson that I'm going to teach you. And really, without sounding sexist, I do have some old-fashioned principles, and, you know, we can't deny sometimes that, you know, as a man, when you grow up and you have a family, whether it's, it's modern or not, you're going to feel a sense of responsibility as the man of the house, as a father, you need to provide for your family. That's just, it's the way it is. So you need to be able to have this in your head. You've got, a, you've got people depending on you. I've got a son depending on me. I've got a wife depending on me. I have to be able to execute. So you've got to get to the same point. So whether you do this in football or not, it's a valuable lesson for you to learn and put into your head. So guys, as we said, there are the six points. I'll email these to you so you have them as well. Um, it'll be recorded so you can have a look at these. Um, I just want to finish with one little story. I was going to touch on this one again, but I'm not. I've got another one I just thought of right now that I want to tell you. Someone asked me, why are you doing this? Why? What do I bother? How many footballers in Australia? What do I bother trying to make a difference? So I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know if you may, you may have heard this before or not, but Remember our friend Adriano? He's back. This time on the Copacabana beach in Brazil. So what happens is every morning he'd go down to the beach. And at about 5 a.m., just before the sun comes up, all the starfish from the night before would get washed up on the sand. So there's like, the beach is about two kilometers long. There's about a thousand starfish. They're all about every 10 meters there's a starfish. It runs from one end of the beach to the other. So Adriana would run out every morning at 5 o'clock and start at the beginning of the beach. He'd run up to the first starfish, pick it up, throw it back in the water. Get the second one, throw it back in the water. This old man would watch him every morning and think, what is this kid doing? He'd get the second one, the third one, throw it back in. He'd be running frantically. Finally, after about a month, this old man couldn't take it anymore. So he, he approaches Adriano and says, listen, don't get scared, I just want to ask you a, a, a quick question. What are you doing? He said, oh, don't you know what happens to the starfish? He said, no. He said, when the sun comes up, if these starfish aren't back in the water, they get dried out and they die. He said, I'm just trying to save their lives. And the old man said, but you know the beach is like two, three kilometers long. You're never going to be able to save them all. What are you doing? You're wasting your time. He picked up a starfish, he looked at it, he showed the old man, he said, you see this starfish? It just made a difference to him. And he threw it back in the water. And that's what I'm trying to do here, guys. If it makes a difference in one of your lives, just one, to me, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because I started this whole thing because of my own life. I had some opportunities which I didn't pursue, and they led me down a different path. And I always vowed that if I could help young players avoid some of the mistakes I did and get them on the right path, that I would do it. And I only need to help one player to make it even, one for one. Yeah? But I'm planning on trying to help more of you. But if we just help one, then it's worth it. Okay? And finally, guys, last point. Drill it into your head. Write it down. Put it somewhere. Nothing works unless you do. Yeah? Work, work, work. It's the only thing that's going to take you from where you are to where you want to get to. The driver in the car. Okay? Thanks, guys. I appreciate you coming on a Saturday morning again.